Watching RT International live from Moscow, we begin with our breaking news, and uh, that is Russia's defense ministry has vowed to shoot down any perceived threat in Syria. It follows a wave of claims in the foreign press that the White House is considering direct airstrikes on Syrian army positions. Let's now discuss this uh, with RT's Daniel Hawkins, who joins me uh, live from central Moscow. So, Daniel, uh, tell us a bit more about this latest development. It's quite a, a worrying and a serious development, uh, Marina. I have to say it follows a marked change in attitude from the Washington administration. John Kerry himself was actually uh, in support of limited strikes against Assad back in 2013. He then switched to a more uh, diplomatic outlook. Uh, and now it seems there has been yet another change of course. Uh, Washington, according to media sources at least, plans to hit uh, Assad forces with strikes on the Syrian uh, air forces' airfields with cruise missiles and other long range weapons. Now this has understandably uh, left the Russian Ministry of Defense quite concerned. They have personnel at the Khmerim Air Base, the Tardis Naval Base and indeed throughout Syria. Now they've deployed uh, a uh, S-400 missile defense system. This is a defensive system uh, designed to shoot down aerial targets such as cruise ballistic missiles and also uh, airplanes and helicopters. Uh, Russia of course sees a uh, grave threat to its personnel in these latest uh, plans to uh, target uh, Assad's forces and the Russian Ministry of Defense certainly didn't beat about the bush in uh, warning of the consequences of such plans. Let's take a listen. I would like to remind the American strategists that the air cover of the Russian bases in Khmeimim and Tartus is provided by the S-400 and S-300 anti-aircraft weapons systems, the strike radius of which may be a surprise to any unidentified flying objects. I should really acknowledge that the Russian anti-aircraft defenses won't likely have time to figure out through a direct line where the weapon's going or who it belongs to. This worrying development has taken place over the last two weeks following the uh, collapse and then suspension of the bilateral talks on Syria between Russia uh, and Washington. The French foreign minister, as we heard earlier, is in talks currently uh, with the uh, Russian foreign minister and will travel to Washington tomorrow to talk to his American counterpart. So it's hoped that uh, not all hope is lost for some sort of de-escalation and dialogue here uh, after what is a uh, pretty worrying development in Syria. Syria. Certainly, Daniel, we'll uh, watching the developments there. Thanks so much for bringing us up to speed on the story. Daniel Hawkins there. Well, a little earlier, the White House said it was uh, well aware of any attacks on President Assad's forces would bring Russia and the U.S. closer to conflict. There's a risk associated with taking strikes at regime targets. That risk includes attacking a regime that does continue to maintain a robust air defense system. It also edges U.S. and Russian military forces closer to confrontation. It doesn't serve anybody's interest. Meanwhile, in the Syrian city of Aleppo, a hotel hosting international journalists and humanitarian staff has been hit by a mortar. So far, no deaths or injuries have been reported. All the hotel guests and staff were evacuated from the building. Police say rebel fighters are responsible for the bombing. On Wednesday, we reported on the tragic story of a Syrian champion swimmer and her 12-year-old brother killed in shelling in Aleppo. And their deaths were reported by Britain's The Independent newspaper, which blamed Syria and Russia for their deaths. But people quickly pointed out that the shelling had actually been carried out by rebel forces. In response, The Independent updated its article. Now it says that the shelling was actually carried out by rebels, adding, though, that this could not be verified. Well, we asked the Independent to comment, but have received no reply. So we verified the story ourselves. Now, this map that you can see um, shows the different forces currently presiding over Aleppo. The shelling occurred here in a predominantly Armenian neighborhood, uh, the area covered in red there, which is under government control. So let's take a closer look now where the tragedy happened. And this is where the young swimmer lived with her family. And here's where the rocket killed her and her brother just several streets away as they went to shop with their mother. Artis Muragizdi have spoke to the family. Marie and her brother were standing right here. 
outside of this small shop when the missile, the rocket, hit. They stood absolutely no chance. Their mother was inside at the time. It took a while before Mireille and her brother could be found because of all the dust after the explosion. But whatever hit them was huge. Her father collected some of the pieces of the rocket. Mireille and her brother were literally torn apart. And you can still see their blood lining this frame and this chair. There was nothing to be done. 21-year-old Mireille, loved by all, a star student and swimmer, died minutes later. صار هالأمر هذا من طرف المسلحين هالشيء هذا بسجلوه شغلات الغلط ما هي صحيحة نحن المسلحين موجودين في الهلوك وهذا راحوا بس بطلوا بأنه بقى بكافي يخلصوا مشان ما يجرحوا قلب أم كمان مثلنا بكافي هالأبرياء عم بدحوا مشان ما بعرف شو the two siblings have been buried at a park in Aleppo that now doubles as a Christian cemetery. Mireille and Arman Hindoyan rest here for now. The Armenian graveyard of Aleppo is currently under the control of Islamists and rebels. There's no burying anyone there. But their father says once that is liberated or freed, he'll have them reburied there with proper tombstones. Morad Gazdi of RT Aleppo. And Damais Kraidi, uh, the official uh, representative of Syria's internal Khmeimim opposition group, joins us live now from Damascus. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. al for joining us here to discuss the situation, the escalating situation, I should say, in Syria. So um, just give us uh, some general thoughts here of what you think was the aim of the U.S. cooperation with Russia in Syria. Was it to fight terrorism or were there some other intentions there? What are your thoughts? Hello uh, and thank you for this uh, talking. Uh, I hope I can express well in English because uh, uh, this is the first time I talk to the world in English because I'm trying to tell them uh, what happening in Syria and who is the Syrian and why we have to love our country. Uh, United States, from the first moment, they are never serious to be against terrorism. Uh, they were only trying to, to make this kind of uh, miserable in Syria. And when Russia come to Syria, and they start to be really against terrorism, helping the Syrian army, the national Syrian army, and then the United States never uh, uh, want to do this. The most problem that, for all my story, that now the terrorists or the terrorism is a project. Someone use this project, United States and those other country with the United States, uh, Saudi Arabia and Qatar and even Turkey and so on. They are using this terrorism as a project to make the change in this area, to, to make another face to the Middle East. So how can I believe that United States want to be against terrorism? If you want, I can talk about uh, many points. Uh, one day they start to talk about the moderate opposition. Who is the moderate opposition? Nasra or uh, Al Fatah Army or uh, Ahrar al Sham? Who is the moderate uh, opposition? There is only one moderate opposition. This opposition must be political opposition and against weapons. There is no opposition want to destroy the country and no opposition want to cut Aleppo and take it to other country. All the Syrians must 
be against every all the enemies that those want to destroy Aleppo because Aleppo is a part of Syria. Aleppo is the the second most important city in Syria. Well, uh, certainly uh, the situation, as uh, the French foreign minister who is in Moscow now said that, uh, described the situation as very grave in Syria and is the issue of great concern uh, for um, a lot of people. But what can we expect now happening, uh, say, between Russia and uh, the U.S. in terms of solving the Syrian crisis? Um, shall we hope for a diplomatic resolution of the situation? What's your feeling? Uh, I think that there is a period of time, United States want to uh, passing time or losing time, maybe until becoming a new president in, on, in the White House. Maybe something like this. And maybe they, they didn't want to tell their, uh, the country they support, like Saudi Arabia and Turkey, that this is must finish. And the uh, Syrian people has the right to tell all the world what they want. I think uh, United States watching the view and, uh, but I trust, I trust uh, Russian, I trust many of the friends of the Syrian people. I trust those country who is really against terrorism. And I trust those country who has uh, a real project to be against terrorism. I'm not sure, but I think there is only one way to push the political process. Uh, if we didn't push the political process, it means war and war and war. And we as a Syrian, who is the loser? Because we lose blood. Right, uh, my uh, Krady, uh, we uh, thanks so much for sharing uh, your concerns with us here on IT International. That was the official representative of Syria's internal opposition group talking to us live.